You know how you are like in this and you're on an airplane and you're in the center seat? That is what it's like here. I can't move. I've got my iron to my side. I've got a camera here. I've got my computer here. I've got another camera here. I've got my stuff to get to over here. And, and then I've got a camera that's like right in my stinking face. So it's like, oh, gee. We shall prevail, all right, everybody? So, hi, everybody. It's Wednesday, July 22nd, and I'm so glad you're choosing to spend this half hour with me, or a little bit more, but I hope not. Uh, I so appreciate the, all of you that are coming on board with this mystery quilt. A lot of people are going, but what is it gonna be? But what is it gonna be? And I wish I had chosen another name for it, it's a, this is how I work guys. I pick up a plan and then I run with it. And in the case of what we're doing, I decided to work with solids. I just, mm, they're so crisp. And then throw in also uh, K facet fabrics. And everybody's going crazy. Like, where's the K facet fabric gonna go? Where's it gonna go? Uh, I'll show you in a few minutes. And the thing is, is it's on point right now. It could very well, not be on point. That's why I have a design wall. So I got a couple questions and I wrote down them. And one was, how did I get my design wall up there? Well, again, it's a gridded flannel from Eddie's Quilting Bee in Sunnyvale, California. It's not as furry as say flannel and stuff like that, but I will take the grid lines over the furriness any day. It's got a little bit of furry and also mine's on backwards. I didn't want the lines to be that dark. So I don't know if that is causing it, but what the deal is, is I got the insulation board. I stretched the fabric around it and you can see I even matched up the lines where the crack is. That took skill and talent. <gasps> And then how we got it up on the wall was it's liquid nailed. So I really can't take it down without destroying everything. So that's how it got up. Oh, please. Yeah, I will. Was that from Barbara? No. Oh, from John. I got to get an earpiece so that John can talk to me when we're doing this. <laughs> that's what I need. I need more than three cameras. I need an earpiece now. So anyways, that's how it's up there. And how the contractor actually did it is he put, we put liquid nail stuff on, and then in these cracks here, he had like a washer with a nail, and that held it in place while the liquid nails dried. Okay. Then another person asked about bending pins. Pins, P-I-N-S. And it was, she was using long. She liked to use fatter pins so they don't bend. The problem is, is that you really want extra fine pins, silk glass head pins, you just do. The fatter pins will cause you dismay, trust me, in the end. And I'm wondering if I could show you, let's have a little pin talk right here. Okay. Let's go right here. So let me get these in here. Oh, look, my, this one is long. I wonder why that isn't, boy, that is, all right, there we go. So here is an, I just grabbed these randomly. Okay, guys, I didn't, I didn't even know I was gonna do this, all right? So let's talk about these three pins. This is a fatter one and usually, oh, look at that, <laughs> cool, usually, you can get like, they're called quilting pins and you can get a million of these for like two bucks or something. The problem is, is the shaft is fatter and this is plastic, so if it hits your iron, you're in trouble. So then there are beautiful extra long pins and I don't prefer those because they, in my book, they do bend more. So bye-bye. And then this is the kind I like. It's just a glass head pin and it's shorter than the extra long ones. What brand? There are several lovely brands out there. It's the brand that makes you want to choke when you see the price tag, all right? So here we go here. I want to go back to my face. I think we figured out what was going on the other day. Oh, I know, I gotta go up camera. It's acting goofy on me again. So here's the deal, guys. 
I so appreciate when you send me pictures and I didn't have any sequoias. <laughs> I got something from Lori and I thought this was so awesome. If you're working with the hand dyes, I cannot hallmark it enough. You must pre-wash. And so I don't know exactly what Lori's living situation is, but I'm copying you, girlfriend. I think this is just a gas. Isn't that perfect? Just perfect. So she's got in her in her over her tub, and it can all just drain down the sink. But look right in there at that blue. Oh boy, that's beautiful. These are highly irregular pieces. And for that, you're gonna have some really cool results. Before I get into teaching, I am so excited that uh, Barbara Black put up in the forum a place where we can all go and, and we can show and tell and all that good stuff. So you may wanna get in there. Now you're, you, right here, it's called the Cape Mystery Quilt. And the only reason it's called Cape is because I've thrown in Cape Facet fabric, okay? But look at this, there's six already and people are showing and telling and that makes my heart really happy. And in that case, I'm gonna tell you that Karen put this up in the forum. Thank you, Karen. It is, uh, she put up, there's tons of ways to do these half square triangles and she put this up as a resource. So we can continue to learn from each other. It's awesome. One thing I've learned from Ricky is it's not this way or this way. It can be and or both. And so you just have to figure out what works for you, correct? And speaking of Ricky, yesterday he debuted his new quilt that he was hoping to have in Houston. Well, that went bye-bye. And then tomorrow he's going to be showing the Lizzie Albright quilt completed, hand quilted and the whole bit. And again, it's at 10 o'clock, just like where we are right now, uh, Pacific time. But talk about learning from each other. So Mary Kay works with us, and she and I both got our Q, Bernina Q20s the same within two weeks of each other. So we are learning, learning, learning. And I'm still discovering this machine. The more I, just, the more I know, the more I'm becoming more comfortable on it, and I'm going to do a series of videos. But Mary Kay, Mary Kay, don't kill me for sharing this, all right? Mary Kay got hold of me and said, why, why is my screen, why is my press... Why is, why is this stupid foot hopping all over my ruler? And I said, okay, so this is my little email to Mary Kay, and then she taught me something. So Mary Kay, I'm doing this ruler work, and I just figured out a faster way for me to even do it. So John's going to take a look, and it's me whipping this ruler around left and right. Okay, now I'm going to go down like this. And then... I'm gonna go like this and follow the stitch line that I have right here. In the middle there. And then I'm gonna look and make sure it's all parallel to thread, which it is. Sometimes I have a hard time getting it going, which is kind of odd. So then I just take the ruler, flip it. Um, I've been using this little pen to see where to stop. Let's see, here's another one here. And so that's how it goes. Just keep flipping the ruler around. I was actually finishing off each end, and I thought, that's crazy. Doubling my time of work. I can just go over what's already been sewn. So I'm gonna come down to here, mark it again. And that's how it goes. So she called me out and she said, I know what I was doing wrong. Because she kept saying the, the, the foot kept hopping up on the ruler. She had the wrong presser foot on. But then she told me something. She said, no, I'm going to teach you something. She said, get the laser light for the, uh, the sewing machine. And then that way, 
I don't have to keep marking it with my little purple pencils pen. So thank you. Thank you, Mary Kay. We're learning together. Half square triangles, how to use a ruler. And again, that was on my Bernina Q20, but you can do it on your domestic, no problem also. Just keep flipping that thing around. So I want to get going here and what size sewing machine needle do I use? I use an 80 top stitch. And when I'm using a finer thread on top, I will also slow down the speed of my machine, okay? Because just slow it down, it's, it's worth it. So this is the block we're doing today. It's called Golden Gate. I love this little block. It's absolutely crisp and adorable. So let's talk about how I chose this color combination because normally I would not have put these two colors together. So I'm gonna go down to this area and I decided to use Capes fabric to take the clue. And basically what's going on is you've got analogous on one side and then you've got across the shot of the orange. So I'm choosing to use this color and kind of this color in here. But then I got out Katie's color wheel and I thought, well, why, what, what's the deal? And where are the little things? Whoops. Well, what I'm basically doing is I'm working here. So I put them away. I'm telling you, middle aisle of an airplane seat. You guys would, the fact I can find my head is a whole thing in itself. So let me see if it's in here. You know, cause I took it out, shoot. And where I put it, well, you know how that goes. So, so I love this color wheel because you can put things on and then you get these really striking combinations and stuff. But of course, I've lost the two wheels right now. So that was directly across. All right, so I had to make another one to demo today. So again, I went to my fabric. And here is this. And I chose this fabric this fabric this fabric and these are tertiary which means it's a triangle uh-oh see i told you don this wasn't gonna work one of my cameras just fell off there we go um this is a triangle on the color wheel and a tertiary gives a snap crackle pop that is absolutely perfect this is complementary across the color wheel and this is like very solid it's a solid combination like christmas is red and green and that's a solid combination it's complementary by the time this class is over i hope you guys feel comfortable with with uh, these different minutiae on your color wheel so i suggested on uh, last on monday that you circle what you're going to be working on. I circled it with a purple pen because I know it's going to disappear. I could use my friction and then I could also take an iron and hit it and go away because I just assumed that the six inch was the eight inch or nine inch. So I ended up with a block like this way too big. So take advantage of this book. It's a textbook right into it when I really wanted a block this big so here we go get rid of that popping so here is what I cut out and let's let's uh let's get a pen and pencil and actually mark up our little book a little bit okay in this in this block you know we could actually look at the block now couldn't we in this block John this thing isn't working I'm gonna need you when it's time my camera keeps falling up this is a nine patch right here okay and so what we're gonna do is um, I'm going to this you would cut normally two four six yeah you would cut this at two and seven eighths but I chose to cut it at three inches because I'm choosing to square off um, when I'm done so I'll cut this this half the squares at three inches and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw a line down the center. This is the friction pin again. And I'm really digging on my thing of putting a little bit of glue here to keep it from shifting. 
and a little bit of glue on the other end to keep it from shifting. So get on there, little glue, stick it, and then another little one. The good news is, is because I am going a little oversized, I, I, I will be able to trim it up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, okay, John, you're gonna get in here. My holder keeps breaking. Let's see, let's see about, hey, John, let's see if you're a good cameraman. No, no, this isn't gonna work. So what I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm just gonna sew it and then I'll come back and show you, all right? Yeah, we got this snazzy little thing to hold the camera onto my sewing machine and it's kind of like it um, pooped out the sticker part. So you're gonna have to trust me with what I'm doing here. <laughs> Again, I've got the uh, 80 weight in the bobbin, and it's a poly. And then I've got the 60 weight quilter select thread on top. Let's see, I have one more. Where did it go? Well, you know what, I don't have to do that one. So here's, here's the thing right here, you can see where I've sewn on each side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the seams. It's going to get rid of that. It's going to get rid of that line. The line is gone now because the friction pin goes away with heat. And then I'm going to cut it corner to corner. So you might want, if you're going to do the square up technique, you're going to want to cut it one eighth more than two and seven eighths, cut it at three. So now I'm gonna go and press it. I always press right side up when I'm making seams go from one side to another. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna press it. I think, I think pressing, set it with the weight, I think pressing is something that people really don't respect the process very much with, and I don't really understand why. Let me do another one, because it will make or break and when I learned to quilt, I learned to quilt, I'm sorry, press from the back side, and you just have such a good chance of getting a tuck in it, you know? So let's, let me do one more over here. Let me sew one more so we can lay the whole, the whole block out. Here we go. Boy, I feel sorry. I'm hoping on the uh, East Coast that you guys have gotten some relief from the heat. I think they said yesterday was the really bad day. So, in here in California today, in Northern California, it's just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. As soon as we're done here, I go out for a walk. If it gets over 80 degrees, I will not walk outside. It's just too dang hot. So let's get here. Oh yeah, and I was gonna show you how I'm gonna work the cape in. Don't let me forget, I'll show you that at the end. The uh, cart got in front of the horse here. So I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna go press it, and then we're gonna lay it out. One. Sometimes I'll stack like this and press, and then I'll put that on top, okay? There we go. So I need to square them up. Uh, Block Lock has a really great tool for this also. On, on my ruler, you can see there's that little diagonal line that's going across. It seems like when I get in, it gets blurrier, but like right there, I'm gonna land that. And this is a two and a half inch ruler. You do not need this ruler. You can use any ruler, but you just wanna make sure that the line, what you use, ends up exactly on the pointy part right there. And so I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go here. Okay. I love trimming up. I gotta tell you guys, this is really the truth. This has been hard for me because I've really gone in a different direction with quilting. And, whoopsie, that slipped. Okay, can you see how that slipped? Not good. So pay attention. I know if Barbara Black's watching, she's proud of me right now. Because <laughs> she is an excellent teacher. By the way, speaking of Barbara Black, she does keep an eyeball out in the forum. And she, again, is going to shepherd us through next year's block of the month that Wendy Williams from Down Under has created for us. And it's, it, go Google uh, Wendy Williams, 
not the talk show lady, but uh, put quilter after it. And I just love her work. Just getting that fabric all set up right now. I should have just turned it for Pete's sake. All right. So we've got this here, this here, this here. Okay. Now, this is the tricky part. Actually, let me just bring this over. Get this in here. I'm doing it wrong. Sorry, guys. Let me get in there. Always, always, always lay out your blocks. Because look what's going on right here. Happens all the time, even to the most trained professional. Now, this is important. You would think looking at these three block, three hunks, they're the same size. They're not. The center one is wider than the two outside ones. You might want to circle that in your book. Again, the center one is bigger than the outer one. You could strip piece this if you wanted, but I'm, in fact, if you've got a little quilting chops under you, you may just want to do that. Uh, let me sew this one on. Again, guys, I'm just going to do the top two rows. I'm not going to waste your time with the bottom two, or the bottom one. Okay, here we go. Whoa! Chain piecing, if you're new to quilting, means that you don't cut the thread in between each sewn unit. You just keep feeding them in, and it does help with things not being sucked down into the bobbin area. Somebody didn't really understand the whole bit with uh, the seven millimeter wide feed dogs or nine millimeter wide. It, the hole, the opening is so big that it, everything just gets pulled down into it. Now a five millimeter wide one, no problem. And I don't know why the tipping point is right after five millimeter but it is. Okay, I got two more to go. Yeah, see how much bigger the white one is, the center one? Take this here, line it up. I wanna see blue on this side, I wanna see white on this side. Oh, also in the form, you guys, you're starting to share your work on this and I love it and some of you are taking a complete detour and that makes me very happy the other thing is people have asked do I have to do exactly what you do absolutely not pick colors that make make you happy because it, it's all gonna work together in the end I don't know where my little leader piece went oh well Remember, airline seat, airline seat. Okay, so now I'm gonna go press. I'm gonna press to the blue. But let's say I had to press to the white. It doesn't matter because I've exactly lined up the back side. That's why it's so important. What's the question, John? How many of these blocks? Are we How many of these blocks are we gonna make? I don't know. Of this block. Oh, of this block, you know what? You can make one, you can make two. If you're just doing a wall hanging, probably one. I just, my deal is that I needed to make them. I needed to see where this mystery was going just a little bit in my brain before I presented to you guys. So I'm ending up with double. John, John, oh, this stupid thing is right in the way. John wanted, um, wants me to make it a big quilt. So it just might because of that. Okay, see, see what I did wrong there? No, is that right? No, that's right. Okay. Yeah, cause that, no, okay, that's perfect. All right, so if, let me push this down here. No more this way. Love this color combination. And all, it's very nautical to me. So if for some reason, Okay, this doesn't exactly line up, but I can certainly live with that, okay? What I'm gonna do, again, is I just love this crazy little glue stick bit. This one I left open, so it's acting poopy. Let me grab another one. These will dry out if you leave the lids off. They just will. 
So every time I use it, close, close, close. And there we go there. Okay, I'll do this one while I'm at it too. How's that? And you can pin. But if you glue, keep it within the quarter inch seam allowance. Now, when I'm doing points and tips together, I absolutely, absolutely do glue. So let me sew this. Man, my machine sounds good. There's nothing like a good oiling and a cleaning of the dust bunnies. You know, the other thing I've learned too is let's say the more expensive the machine, the more maintenance is very important. But I will tell you this, with that 80 weight in your bobbin, you get a lot less junk going on in there. You just do. Now let me show you something here. See how that's falling short right there? I'm wondering if I didn't press, oh, yeah, my pressing is a little bumpy. It's, I mean, it's okay. Oh, whoa. See, just that little bit's gonna cost you. So I'm gonna go back and redo that. Not redo, just press it again. Can we see? Yeah. See, which was the bad one? Oh, it was this one. Okay. Let's see, I'm gonna press, this one goes here. Okay, if this one is going in, this one has to go out. But I don't like that because I'm cutting this tip off. So I'm gonna press this one this way. Whenever possible, you want your seams to be going in um, opposite directions. Sometimes the gods just won't let that happen. Press that better. So that means I gotta change this one and go the other way. Here I'll show you. I'm confusing myself. If I'm confusing myself, I know you gotta be going out of your mind. Another question, John? Um, do you need to about worry about reversing the solid fabrics? Do you have the to wrong side? Okay, so that's an interesting question. Do you have to worry about reversing the solid fabrics? There is not a wrong side on solid fabrics, but those hand dies, there's definitely a right side and a wrong side which I think is crazy because they're hand dies, but one side is like softer. And that's supposed to be the outside, right, John? That's the outside. That's the outside. But remember, you bought the fabric. You can do whatever the heck you want with it. It's yours. You paid the price. So I'm gonna line this one up, and then we'll just talk about these last seams. And then I'll show you what I'm thinking. And again, I, I don't know, it's a mystery to me. And I think the thing that's confusing people is that when you do a mystery quilt, it's like the presenter knows exactly what's going on, but nobody else does. In this case, nobody knows what's going on, myself included. Okay, so if this goes in this way, iron that. I'm not gonna set it just in lieu of time. Nobody knows. This is how I work. And I know for some people this is really uncomfortable. And that's great. That's absolutely great. I'm not trying to be mean, but this is how you grow as a quilt maker. Okay, there we go. Got it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin it the way. Okay, see how that's bubbling like that? I don't like that. I really want it flat. I, you know, I didn't used to think pressing was that important. It's uber important. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my extra fine glass head pins. Uh, we might sell them at the TQS store. I'm gonna look right in here and see that it's lined up. Drop a pin in a 16th of an inch before and grab Cindy's pin cushion. Look what Cindy Needham made me. So sweet. Oh, she's got great shows on TQS, by the way. There we go. And then, we're thinking about doing some more master classes. What do you guys think? I think it's a great idea. I, you know, we've done so many shows that I forget what we've done. Okay, see how it lines all the way across? That's still not pressed properly. I wish, still, there's still a little pull. I'm a freak about pressing. 
All right. So I'm going to sew this and let's just see. Let's just see how this whole thing goes. I just love this block, Golden Gate. Moment of truth right now. Ready? Drum roll. <gasps> Ta-da! Yay! That makes me happy! Happy, 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 happy! Okay, so. Let's talk about. Let's just talk about what I'm thinking. Again, I start with a plan. But the plan can go sideways. Real easy, real fast. Do you have some more questions over there? Um, Let me show this while John's gathering questions. Do you set up before you open up the triangle? Do you set? Yeah, I, 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 I would probably. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would set. I would set the the seams, and that's just because of Marianne Fawns. <laughs> She'll never live that down with me. I am using an 80 top stitch needle is what I'm using, okay? And then who is John? <laughs> He's the pro Get over here. I'll be sorry you're wearing that shirt. <laughs> John is my husband. He is on the TQS journey, which means the Alex Anderson journey. Uh, he quit his job. He was controller at a plant. Gosh, I, how long ago? Seven years. Seven years ago, a uh, concrete plant. And our kids were done with college and all that. And we knew that the quiltshow.com really needed help. We had no idea how much help we need. But uh, he said, I think I want to quit my job. And we did the math and we could do it. And I said, you have to call my dad and ask permission. So he did. And my dad the next day called up and goes, excuse my language, but this is what he said. He said, I think it's the best GD idea you've ever had in a long time, kid. That's not bad. Okay, so everybody's asking, where's the cape fabric going to go? So let me show you what I'm thinking here. I This was on the board before we taped we taped and they had to take it off. So what I was thinking was I was going to do, I'm, I still may do it. I've thrown some polka dots in from my own stash. Wish it were a little, yeah, I think it's better like this. And then when I had it on the board, I saw right here, there were some big stars happening. And so I did that by keeping the cave fabric the same Okay, and then the other ones I just kind of mixed in, mixed and matched. But I will tell you this, I probably will also turn them so they're not on point and play with them that way. But basically, I am using the cape fabric for the alternate blocks, the spacer blocks, or, or whatever. And it's so funny because I don't think this is getting out of control. This brings complete happiness to my heart, but until it's sewn together, we don't know for sure. The other thing I want to show you that you can kind of see, I don't have it around me. Um, over here is a pinwheel block that I made, and it was out of the book, and it was too chunky for the intricacies of everything else going on. This little guy here, was way too fussy and be glad because this was a bear of a block to do okay so i am kind of making it aware uh making it look like everything's kind of the same now somebody said these spools look like swastikas and it took me a long time to see it but then i saw it and i went okay you're bye bye and you guys can be ever so grateful because that was a complete bear horrible thing to piece. I just wanted to cry. It was so hard. So I'm trying to keep things where we're just playing with fabric, playing playing with fun shapes. The other rule that I'm making for myself so far is that anything that's on a diagonal, so to speak, like this one, like this one, not a diag, well, no, like corner to corner, this one, this one, this one, I'm facing all of those vertically. Again, I don't know where this thing's going to go, you guys, because truly, truly, it, it, it is a mystery to me. It's so much fun. Can can you use a single hole throat plate? I am begging you to use a single hole throat plate. 
begging you. Um, if I talk out loud, I make less mistakes. <laughs> we all talk out loud. <laughs> it's what we do. So <laughs> thanks so much. Now, if anybody, what is this saying? Are the nautical colors you're using mainly for demo purposes? Oh no, it's going to go in. This is going to go in that quilt. It'll be just wonderful. I'm, I'm just using Cave's fabric as my guide. And this came from, from this. These colors were all in there. Actually, I was going to use green, and then I thought, no, I want to do yellow. And then I believe it's a, a triad, which is a triangle on the color wheel. So, people, um, I think we have it all. Do I starch fabric? No. Yeah, oh, oh, no, I don't. Um, if it needs it, I would throw a little spark jar. Spark <laughs> Starch. The hand eyes, I might toughen up just a little bit, but they've got a beautiful hand, but they are soft. So I might toughen those up a little bit. And you guys, we are still packaging. We are still cutting. Just please bear with us. And remember to go to the forum and show your work. Some of you are overachievers, okay? That makes me really happy. So have a great day. And yes, Catherine, I am sewing with white thread. Talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Enjoy the beautiful day wherever you are in the world.